MorningTested.com. Adam here. It is actually 7 a.m. in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I am at the first annual NomCon, Nation of Makers Convention, here in Santa Fe. And I am, along with an army of volunteers, participating today in the construction of an incredible sculpture. It is a true collaboration. How collaborative is this sculpture? It involves 700 collaborators on six continents, contributing over 2,600 separate pieces to make a sculpture that is six feet high and the whole thing will go together in just two days. Let's go in and see what it's about. Okay, it's time to explain what's actually going on. This is Rosie, actually the small Rosie. This is Jen Schachter. This is Todd Blatt of We The Builders. Okay, what's, what's going on? So we've got uh, the small Rosie, which was made uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, people from all over the world printed parts, mailed them to us, and glued them together. So each of these parts is made by a separate person or separate makerspace yeah. and sent to you. So you send out files. Yeah, we have the files up at wethebuilders.com. And yep. anyone who wants to help can go to that site, download a part, print it out, and then mail it to us. And then you assemble it all into a Rosie. And she looks pretty contiguous, but it's also diff I can imagine all the topologies, they don't always match perfectly, right? Yeah, but that's no, kind of part of the deal. Like things just come together and it looks great when it's done and yeah. it's the, yeah. that everyone contributes and then it all goes together. And what we're doing today is we have, we have a huge sculpture. This one's 33 inches tall. We've done four sculptures this size. Okay. Uh, ben Franklin, Edgar Allan Poe, George Crowdsourcington, and then Rosie. And the Poe is absolutely gorgeous. I yeah, love we'll that. Yeah, we'll show you Poe. It's, yeah. it's really cool. Uh, Poe was sculpted by Ryan Kittleson digitally in the computer. Yeah. And we chopped that one up. George is from the Walters Art Museum in Baltimore. Uh, the Houdon bust of Benjamin Franklin. We scanned a miniature of that and then scaled it back up. Yeah. And then Jen sculpted this one in clay, like seven inches tall, and then direct dimensions in Baltimore 3D scanned that, and we scaled it up to, to this size. So how big is the big one that I'm helping you guys work the on? The big here? one is going to be over six feet tall, like 2,625 parts. We've got a pedestal. It's all skin tone colors. And it's, is this the so biggest thing you guys have att attempted? Uh, I have done. I mean, it's the big. Yeah, it's the biggest with the Village project. Okay. Sure. The biggest um, project I've worked on is our White House sign. Oh, well, yes, physically largest, yes. absolutely. Yes. But in the number of parts, number I mean, it's. It, it, I'm so noticing uh, as I was assembling one of the layers that there are mass, not massive, but there's a wide array of tolerances being exhibited. You guys are kind of getting this physical feel for the exact state of the tolerance of 3D printing right now. We're taking a sampling of every, all the printers, maybe not all the printers, but many of the printers that are out there and seeing how the tolerances evolve and get better over Has over it time. been getting better over time? You did yeah. one last year, so. We've done one every year since 2013. Okay. That was started at the Hackathon in Baltimore. Five years. Yeah, so we did five years, five sculptures. Uh, the first one, like we're, we're improving because of of our changes, so each time like we make stuff right. different, and then also the printers over time are getting better. Right. So now we have more resin parts, and then we got a, a whole big box of resin 3D prints. And but making making a mosaic of this, is, there's no program that does this. You have to kind of reinvent it each time you're doing it to, to the tolerances that you're working with. Right, so I mean, we've, we found some tricks, uh, <laughs> but it's really just slicing it in sections and saving the STL files and labeling the coordinates, and people are then printing it, writing by hand the coordinates on there. Uh, for, for the first project, we inscribed all of the coordinates. Uh, into each part? Into each block. Right. So it was 110 blocks. It was a lot more manageable. A little yeah. less like uh, it. <laughs> But that one, uh, the blocks were larger, and so parts curled more, so there's more gaps. And you know, this one's way more aligned than the first one, right, both right. because of people's printers are improving and because our process is like making smaller blocks. I love the calico aspect of it, but you seem to maintain some basic colors. What are the instructions you're giving people in terms of the colors to use? For the smaller Rosie, we said you got light, dark, red, and blue. So you get the Oh, okay, spectrum. so that way you knew you would get the bandana and the hair and the shirt, and the other stuff could kind of be calico and it still works. Yeah, and then Jen had this crazy idea, hey, let's do 
the big one, 2600 parts, all in skin tone colors. You know? Skin, that's what you, I was like, what color guidance could you be giving for this incredible mix of colors? Skin tone? Yeah, we wanted to do skin tones because um, Rosie as a symbol obviously represents lots of different people. So we wanted to show that she is all different backgrounds, all different races, and all different colors. So we got, we, we asked for, she's very, she's very diverse. I'm super getting chills right now. That is the coolest, because I've been literally trying to imagine what is their metric for color? It's so balanced and yet so varied, and yet it falls within this category. And I was like, I don't know what this category is. And of course, it's skin tone. Yeah. So we put up a, a suggestion photo of a bunch of different filaments and yeah. just let people go and send them what they wanted. Yeah. It must be really cool to see how people uh, uh, accentuate the simple task you've given them and add to it. Yeah, we had uh, someone who rolled up the names of women in their life who inspired them and put them inside of the pieces as the print was closing up. So all of these names are in there like a time capsule. Does this give you ideas for future builds and things to tell people to go ahead and try? Yeah, I mean, we just say the outside surface has to stay the same. Yeah. So you have to have this outside surface match what the digital file is. People have been editing the inside one and like really taking ownership. Like this is the the biggest project for me that include the most number of people. Yeah. So everyone like really, you know, takes the hold and say, hey, this is mine, I'm contributing, I get to work with all these other people and they really customize their part. And also they want to make it like stand out because it's it's hard to identify where your part is. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'll bring them to maker fairs and we take them around a lot of different shows and mm -hmm. they'll come visit the booth and people jump in and work at the booth, they'll volunteer, I'll get them a ticket and like I want to tell people about this project I worked on and it's neat to like people just come in and, and, and they know all about We The Builders too because right, they, right. they helped and then they'll you know, go at the booth and stand there. This isn't, it's so much more than just asking for parts from people, they really are taking it on and it's a genuine collaboration, that's yeah. thrilling. Well in the spirit of collaboration there's still a lot of work to do so point me in the right direction yeah, let's and let's jump it. back let's in. Okay. After all the labor, uh, mental labor and physical labor that Todd and Jen have put into this project, it is insanely yeah. gracious of them to let me participate in the gluing of the stack pieces because this is by far the most fun part of the operation. They're being very sweet about it. Okay, so these are some of the renderings that help you guys figure out what is where and the order of operations. I mean, it's sort of a, it's just a mind-bending amount of pieces and parts and processes. Walk me through what, what, this, what these tell you. Sure, so there's a three coordinate system. Uh, the X and Y axes obviously are the um, forward and backward and side to side. The Z layers are going vertically. Right. So there's 21 Z layers, each one is like a cake slice. And we label them so that uh, you can find your piece in, within the coordinate system once you locate it. Okay. Each of the blueprints has a map so that you can see the silhouette of where the piece is going to go and also locate it um, using the coordinate system. So got we, it. We've got it co covered in a couple ways. These renderings are helping us figure out where the sections are going to break. So essentially the torso, uh, those sections are all solid. They're going to be, uh, you know, stacked together and glued. That right. will be one section. The head will be another section. There's a skeleton inside with the armature. That's like uh, two by fours and dowel rods two and by, stuff yeah. to hold it together? Yeah, to keep the, the um, structure supported. This part of the armature will be enclosed inside of the shape. Sure, yeah. So we're building those around the armature. So this will permanently be attached. Right. The head will pop onto the top and then this will lift out of the torso. So to be able to take it apart and transport it. We do have to get it out of here. Right, of course. You can't live here forever. <laughs> I'm noticing the rendering here you have looks you didn't have the colors people were sending in. That's a trick I'm doing in Netfab. So that Netfab lets you import STL files and you can give it random colors of what color it is. It's, it's amazing how close this actually looks to what you got. It, yeah, it came out pretty well. I went, I looked at a bunch of different filament manufacturers and sampled what skin tone filaments they might have mm -hmm. and made a composite of like, these are some options for you, so use this as inspiration. And we got pretty much what we asked for. It's a very diverse range of skin tones. So do you feel like you're on the home stretch here? Or you feel like you can almost take an uh, exhale? Almost. Yeah. almost. When the head goes on the top, then that's when you can breathe. So we're gonna get it going. Like, now that 
all the parts are in the right spots, glued together. It's, it's gonna be good. Okay, uh, you were saying the sections, some sections are easier than others. What is the section that's got you most sort of like, ah. those, those ones, not, like eight, nine, 10, 11, those are. Right in here? It's, it's multiple parts. Yeah. On that layer, the arms are there where the arms start attaching to the body. It's right, really it starts to it's go, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it starts to go out and it's super wide there. I think that this joint is going to be tricky because these layers will all already be glued together. The head will be glued together. That's not a problem. But being able to get the, the armature inside and then attach the pieces around it, but we have to be able to... Get there to, to screw something exactly in. Right, right, right. Okay. So that'll be, that'll be a little bit of figuring out as we go. And then the, the armature will actually embed into the platform, so we'll cut out holes. Oh, nice. Well, and then screw through. The and that's, this is the underside, so I'm looking yeah. at the support that it'll get. Yeah, we yeah. left a lot of tolerance because we, from past sculptures, we know that they may not line up perfectly. So there's a lot, have, yeah. yeah. You have to have enough, right, you, you have, have, have to have slop in there. to get the yeah. dowel rod through, but then it's not actually supporting. So what, do you have a plan for securing once the dowel rod's in? We have the insulation foam, the spray foam. The spray rigid foam. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. So I think it will work. As you got to be sparing about it because it could push the whole sculpture apart. Right. And ooze through the cracks potentially if there are any. <sighs> All right, I'm going to get back to gluing. Great. Awesome. <laughs> What's that? It's really grabbing. Yeah, no, it's very, <laughs> it's a nice quick set. The front looks nicely aligned. Good. Yeah, it needs a little. It's working? Yes. Right, so you have this line and you do have that line. So you mm -hmm. could potentially figure out, where they figure out roughly where these are gonna, because it's, am I assuming right that this line comes up and gets centered kind of above this void? Yeah, yeah, so it's the... It's just they're at angles because they had to be. Right, yeah, so of it's, course. It's so the assembly here is non-trivial because there's an internal structure. Uh, this is all just made up of blocks. They don't interlock. They're just glued to each other. So in order to give the giant six-foot-tall Rosie some tensile strength, they've designed two-by-fours and elves to fit inside. But the trick is where and how. Those all have to be cut to length and fit at the right angles. And that's what uh, Jen and Todd are trying to figure out right now. So we don't have clamps, so we're going to have to uh, hold the two-by-fours while I jigsaw them. Yeah, 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 totally. I'll stand on them. Cool. No, not yet. Once, once this goes on, then okay. we know where the arms are and the cross beam goes and we drop from the cross beam. And right. Jen was thinking cleverly, we make four holes, drill them, and then she knows where to jigsaw from okay. underneath.
Where does this go after this? Uh, there's a couple people have offered in Santa Fe, and then folks on the East Coast want it as well for a 3D printing festival. I was like, if you can pay to ship it, you can. Yeah, you I can guess I it. guess so. <laughs> They're gonna have to fly you to put it together. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. Give them very elaborate instructions on how this all happened. I think taking it apart is gonna be interesting too. So we just finished the project. All 2,625 pieces have been glued together and they're assembled behind us. We wanted to say a special thank you to everyone who sent in parts, some people many, many parts. Um, we really appreciate all of your contributions and seeing what you've written and messages and things. Todd, do you want to talk about other thank yous? Yeah, I mean, thanks to all of you again for printing these parts and mailing them and to all the helpers who came here and built the project here on site. Um, if you didn't get to participate in this project, make sure to check out wethebuilders.com and you can sign up for the mailing list for alerts for the next project. Um, thanks to the sponsors who made it happen, who you know helped receive the parts that make Santa Fe and who helped build the platform and you know brought us out here. So it was really great. So thank you all for, for helping. Yeah, and we look forward to building with you again in the future. Thank you.